Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, I wanted to talk about some of the glitches and things going on. I've heard a lot of talk of people having sales-related issues here on eBay. I wanted to give you some options, or an option that does honestly seem to work. Uh, a lot of people talk about ending listings and sell similar. I honestly wouldn't do that because you're going to kill your ranking off of eBay. A large amount of purchases and people being drawn into eBay comes from Google and off-site searches. So if you don't let an item run for a certain length of time, you are cutting off any opportunity for that to happen. It takes so long for Google to rank the billions or trillions of listings and other sites and things that show up on a search. So if you list an item now, it's going to take a while for that item to show up on a ranked search on Google or any browser whatsoever. So I would never want to kill that. Another aspect of ending a listing is if you cancel it or end it before it's over, you're losing money. And then when you go to list it again as a sell similar, you are billed for that new listing. Now I've got a video and I'll have a link right up here that will show you how to end the automation of the good till canceled. Basically it will mean that after the 30 days of the good till canceled, every listing will just shut off and you will have to manually start it again. That is an option. eBay has it automatically set to start when you have your store. So it's automatically always on. You can turn that off. Most people are unaware of that fact. So again, it won't cost you a dime that way. It'll run out at the end of the 30 days and just won't relist. So you won't lose anything when that happens. So that should help you with that aspect of it if you do wish to do the sell similar. Now, sell similar technically has some basis to it but again ebay is more looking for google shopping and search ranking than anything else so it wouldn't make sense to do something that would void that when you sell similar you're basically getting a new item number but with that that means any watchers are going to be totally cut off from your listing because it's a whole new listing and i know people say they'll find it again if it's an issue or something or it's something they really wanted well i keep finding items that aren't showing in search results so i would worry that if you ended it and did sell similar that those people may not find that listing again i've had to actually give people item numbers for them to actually find the item because they couldn't find it through a normal search because of the way it's ranking and the way they changed it in october so for me, this isn't me going to give up on eBay. I still plan on being a full-time eBay seller until they shut the door. Now with your listings and them ranking them and things like that, I know people talk about resetting and, you know, calling this and doing that and just hitting edit and not doing anything. That really doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything at all. It's, it's, you're still going to have the same aspects of it. It's still going to rank or not rank. The first things you should always do is look at the title and the keywords. Do you have the keywords up in the front of the title? Are they prominent? Are they the correct ones? Are your photos good? Are your return policies good? Is your ranking, your, your feedback good? These are all factors that people are going to be looking at. I know many people say that doesn't matter. Now more than ever, it really does matter because there's so many options for people to choose from. They want to make sure they're not going to get screwed over by buying from one vendor versus another. I always compare. Everybody I know compares. If you don't look up the safety of a purchase, that's just not a smart purchase. I always look into those issues. Just like shipping, a lot of people won't want to ship to certain places. It's the same atmosphere, the same aspect of it. Look in and inspect these to make sure you know what you're doing on this. Now, one thing you can do that will address and help refresh your listing is to alter something on it. Plain and simple, there's three key aspects that relate just to the listing itself being searchable. Now, that's the photo, the title, and the price. Those are confined to that listing. They are the key elements. They are always going to be tied to that. So let's say you put it on sale or something like that. It's like an overlay. The original price is still there. So nothing's changed when you do this promotion. You're not pushed up to the front. There are advertisements sent out though to your watcher. So that's one aspect that I do. But one key thing that I find after running many different tests is to bulk edit the price by just $1. You're not ending it. You're not costing yourself more listings. You're not killing a ranking, but you are changing a key factor. So it would be forced to rank it somewhere else just by the sheer fact that you've altered the price. You can bulk 
alter these. So there's no more of this click cell similar and then boom, you know, I've got to list it one by one by one. If you have a thousand listings or tens of thousands of listings like I do, there's no way on earth you can sell similar that way. You know, the other thing that people say is change some of the wording. Again, you want the correct keyword. You want the correct title. That is a key must do thing for your listing. So with that thought in mind, I've played around changing prices up by a dollar next month, changing them back down. It does seem to keep them fresh and I do garner some sales and more watchers and views from things like that. Now, sell similar, you may get a little boost just on eBay, but what else are you killing? There's no way to compare it as well either. That item, when you sell similar, may sell the first week or the first day you're up. Even if you didn't do the sell similar item and just let it keep running, it still could have sold. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just sheer luck of the draw when something sells. Unless you're running, say, an auction, you know what day that's going to end. But a bin with a BO, best offer, you know, it, it just doesn't work that way. There's no you know, cause versus effect here to, to be proven. But when we've run these tests on and off with pricing like this in similar or identical items where we do raise the price one on one version and not on the other, there is a difference in ratio as to what sells. So this is basically using a scientific process to look at it. So if I let one item run and I have an identical item, and I let that run with a dollar increase one month and a dollar decrease in another month, and that one sells over the other one at a higher percentage rate, it kind of establishes a pattern that, yes, that does seem to affect the, the ranking and the sell-through rate and the visibility on items. Other things, of course, would be to list items, you know, good items, I should say, on a constant basis. Now, if you can't afford to keep listing them, you're really going to have to dig into your listings to determine what the issues are. It may be glitch related from eBay. It may be you're selling clothing and your sizes and other selected factors just are being removed constantly from eBay. I've had glitches constantly. I couldn't print invoices. Today, I went to get this video ready here and it wouldn't pull up my listings when I went to the edit feature when I was trying to do bulk. It is working now, but it was not working earlier. So there are glitches that constantly keep popping up, including glitches for your sales total, other reports and things on the hub not showing, not being able to change from viewing 25 of your listings in the listing section of your hub to say 200, all kinds of things like that keep happening to me still. And this is going on for weeks. So, you know, I, again, I'm not discouraged. I'm just going to work through this. Let's hop over to the screen and I'm going to show you how to easily alter a key factor on your listing that will force it to at least recategorize you by your pricing structure. So let's hop over there now. Okay, so I'm in my hub. You can see it right here. I've searched by highest to lowest first. And I'm just going to go into here. I'm going to select a small group. 25 is what's displayed on here. We're going to edit selected listings. So we're in here now. I'm going to select all of the items, all 25 listings. We're going to go to edit fields price quantity here and then we're going to do buy it now price and we're going to do decrease and these are all high dollar items so i'm just going to decrease each one by five dollars now you can do a dollar you can do 50 cents anything that you do to address the price like this is going to change a key factor in the listing something that's been burned into it. it it has to refresh it you're changing physically changing it not through a promotional markdown but you're changing the physical price on it so a lot of people in the past would just click edit and not really do anything just trying to refresh it that way you're not changing or doing anything if you drop it by a dollar or raise it by a dollar you are physically altering the original listing to a different slightly different version of that listing it will give you a different spot in the search results. It will have to refresh the information because the old information tied to it was based on the old price. It now has a new price. Technically speaking, it makes sense. Test-wise speaking, it does seem to make sense. It does seem to have a marketable increase over sales, watchers, and such forth over ones that this wasn't done to. Again, because I am altering something on the main frame, the main structure of the listing itself. The price, the title, and one single photo are tied to the structure, the main 
framework, the foundation of this listing. Everything else is on top of that. A promotional would be like the first floor. And I've used this analogy before, but it's the same basic structure. You are touching and addressing the foundation of the listing when you alter the price. It's a key feature that's locked into it. That's why a sale works and reverts back to the original price because it hasn't altered the original price. It is just overseeded it with another layer of information, a first floor. So that's why that works. Promoted listings as well, it's not technically altering it. It's changing its ranking because of the promoted listing, which is, again, lying on top of the structure, the framework of the listing. So that's just a rough analysis on why that works. But we're going to put $5 in here. We've decreased them all by $5. And we're just going to go down here, save and close. It's going to process them right now. They've all been dropped by $5. I'm going to submit the changes. Confirm and submit. Now, you could save some of this as a template. I never do that. I have specific templates for each category area that I sell in. We know which ones to use as a template for cards, for postcards, toys, action figures, whatever the case may be. We have different setups for each one. So let's just confirm this. And this is going to submit it. Um, eBay quotes that it may take some time for this to process. So again, I don't worry about that. There is no fees incurred by doing this. You can alter the listings all you want. Price up, price down. There is no specific rules that say you can't do this. It does, as I said, alter key facts and information that are tied to the listing and how it is pulled up in searches. Now, there's only a certain length of time, I would imagine, that this is feasible. So after you do it, if you don't see an initial boost, you know, it may not have a huge effect. It just depends, again, as to the specific items you are selling. If your items aren't any good, the photos aren't any good, pricing's off, all of that can have a key factor in whether they sell, as can your return policy especially during this season. The biggest amount of returns are after Christmas. Everybody's buying for Christmas. They're not going to be wanting to buy from somebody who won't allow them to return it if it was a gift and it may not fit somebody. So keep that in mind. Those are factual things that people think about during this season more than any other time of the year. We sell on other platforms, so if I don't sell it here, I have no issues with selling stuff on other sites. Again, this is my business. I'm not just here to support just one site, whether it be Amazon or eBay. I'm here to make myself a living. So I can't rely on one single site, one single app, or anything like that in this day and age. You have to cover yourself and be safe because sites do make issues and in mistakes that can cost them. All you have to do is look at some of the brick and mortars and things that have went under. Toys R Us is a perfect example. Hopefully that'll give you a little boost on here. This won't cost you a dime to try it out. It's not like self similar. Now, if you do want to do self similar, that's your call. I personally would not do that or recommend it. But if you do, I would honestly recommend shutting off the automation for auto relist and just waiting till they all end instead of ending them and then paying to relist them sooner than you should have. If you go here on the very same page that I just did the edits, click on automation preferences, you can just slide down and listing automation schedule. Suspend my items from being automatically listed and relisted. This will stop them from auto restarting after 30 days. You can suspend them so they will all end at a specific time right here on this same page. Now, I'm not sure on which store levels have this or not. I have not had a chance to look into that. If you have a hub, though, you do have this option in the hub, regardless of the store level from what I understand. Now, I have an anchor store level, and this is in all anchor stores, this option. Automation preferences. You can also look at your listing template as well as your business policies, which I would always recommend setting up business policies, which make your life much easier. But that's about it for this part of it. Well, there you go. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and thoughts on this. Again, everybody's going to have different results from all of these aspects. It really depends on what you're selling. But if you've double checked your keywords, your photos, everything about it, the pricing and such forth on it, this should hopefully give you some help and a little bit of alleviation from loss of sales from many other factors. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.